episode 13. We are back for another week and we have lots to get to this week. Oh so let's gosh. get right into it, shall we? So much happening. I want yeah. to start off with that large fire that happened at that illegal oh, yeah. homeless encampment along Mercer in yeah. Seattle, right by the Google building that happened earlier this week. That smoke, man, just coming into the air, really causing traffic, causing a lot of onlookers. And this isn't the first time we've had problems at this encampment. It is not. You can see the flames. You can see the smoke from like several miles away in the city. And you talked about the problems there before. On top of this big fire that we saw this week, we have covered a murder there. We have covered rapes. We have covered rampant drug use at that camp. Mayor's office in Washdot telling us they are working on a joint resolution to shelter everyone who's been impacted by this fire. And what's crazy is we got about 100 comments on this story on our website just within the past 12 hours after it happened. A lot of people weighing in on this yeah. one. Let's take a look at some of the comments. Clay Ryder says, I'm not really sure why people move here anymore. Nothing stays the same forever, but the city bears no resemblance to the Seattle I moved to 25 years ago and not in a good way. Essentially saying it's gone downhill over the past two decades. For sure. Como Watch is saying this encampment should have never been allowed to form in the first place. And Miss K says, Seattle, why don't you defund the city council's paychecks? Mm. Yeah, so a lot of people have strong opinions about this one. And uh, as usual, we would ask you, what would you like to see change? <laughs> what would you like to see different? What are your solutions, suggestions? But Steve, I'm foreshadowing those comments <laughs> later on in the week, and I know they're going to look a lot similar to the ones we've seen. I was going to say, I think I have an idea of what some of the folks are going to say, because it seems like we hear it from week to week to week. Homelessness, obviously, an issue that we cover quite a bit on this show. It's a, uh, an issue that we know a lot of you care about and are impacted by. For sure. Um, um, and a lot of you have opinions about it. So let us know what you think. And, you know, is this joint resolution that the mayor's office and WashDOT are working on to sort of help people find shelter because of this, is it enough? And some of these comments, you know, they lead us back to that topic we were talking about last week on Sound On yeah. about people not feeling safe here anymore. We talked about that national survey posted by the Seattle Times, Seattle ranking uh, the top destination or top city where people are feeling pressure to move due to neighborhood safety. We got a lot of comments about this. People. Yeah. Uh, not feeling safe here and why they're feeling this way. Yeah, so Nika posted this comment on Comonews.com saying, I saw it coming years ago, moved to the mountains, and there's peace and quiet there, she says, uh, and a neighbor looking after neighbor. So it seems like it's a more of a relaxed atmosphere compared to what a lot of people are feeling right here in the city. It actually sounds kind of peaceful. Very calming, moving, doesn't it? Just moving up to the mountains. Yeah, a like mountain I'm oasis. Out of the city. I'm going to the rural area. Or you the know, and you're still fairly close, about an hour or so away. Fairly close. Yeah. Uh, this other person and Mary Peterson, 8379, saying, we used to feel safe in our neighborhood, but now we won't go out after dark. We have someone mm. who screams obscenities at us and saying they're going to kill us, kill the expletive. Oh, yeah, we can't say expletives here. But people are angry, people are frustrated. That comment there on our YouTube page. What I was struck by is sort of looking through the comments on our YouTube uh, page and our website yeah. is, there was a couple of people that said in particular that they won't even drive on mm -hmm. I-5 through the city of Seattle just because of all the problems here with homelessness and crime, and that sort of thing. Um, and I think at least one person, maybe more said, uh, if they do, they're carrying a weapon. Yeah. Just because they don't know what they're gonna face. Taking matters into their own hands to yeah. make sure they're always kind of self-protected, yeah. I guess. And and that's just, we shouldn't have to go out with that And is that minds. extreme? I mean, should people feel like they have to take those measures because of what they see on the news, what they read in the newspaper about events that happen here? Does that mm. seem extreme? Yeah. Or um, is there more that city leaders could be doing to address the problem of safety and homelessness? Kind of the, the same issue that we talked about in the first topic. And we talked about how this does feel very much like a broken record, it Steve. Does. Lots of people frustrated about the same topics week after week. Yeah. We see it on our comments. I mean, we, <laughs> we're talking about it, so. One thing that I know that has impacted a lot of people around here is watching this devastation um, over in Hawaii mm. with these raging wildfires that have gone through areas on Maui and Lahaina, um, obviously a historical place on Maui, and you know dozens of people have been killed, thousands of people have been forced out of their homes, there's been thousands of homes and businesses that have been destroyed because of these flames, and you just feel helpless looking at 
what's left behind there, which isn't much. It's devastating seeing yeah. those before and after visuals. And we know a lot of people have connections here. People in the Pacific Northwest have yeah. local ties over there in Maui. Maybe they have family members or maybe they have a business over there or a home there. Steve, that death toll earlier this week, at least 99 and officials say that could possibly grow because yeah. there's a lot of people who are unaccounted for. Now, this quickly has become one of the deadliest wildfires in U.S. history. Mm -hmm. uh, we found this list here, uh, courtesy of ABC News, or no, courtesy of the National Fire Protection Association. They say that this uh, fire in Maui is uh, the fifth deadliest wildfire in U.S. history, which is pretty extreme. Uh, you can see it's still pretty far off from the number one wildfire on the list. That was October 1871, Peshtigo, Wisconsin, uh, 1,547 deaths yeah. there in that fire. What struck me when looking at this list, and I know you found this, was the number of fires that have happened in fairly recent years, within the last six or seven years, that are now in the top 10. You know, we, we talk about this every single year, with these destructive wildfires that it seems like they're happening more and more. Yep. And obviously they've been taking a number of lives in the past five, six, seven years in particular and it just keeps on happening. They keep on happening. And yeah. uh, there's actually one close to our home here on this list, mm -hmm. the eighth uh, deadliest wildfire in U.S. history. That was September 1902, the Yakult Burn Fire, right on the Washington-Oregon border, 65 deaths there. So Maui already topping that. And we know a lot of uh, folks from our region talking about local connections uh, that are going over to the islands to help out maybe with search and rescue efforts. You know, we have firefighters, we have first responder teams that have been going over there um, helping distribute food. And there's such a huge need for help right now. And I think in a lot of these cases, when something like this happens, you really feel helpless about what can you do to help all of these folks that are hundreds or thousands of miles away. And there are ways you can help. Tons of local resources. I've seen efforts uh, put forth by the Humane Society here in Washington, our local chapters, uh, specifically up in Snohomish County, mm -hmm. uh, the Red Cross, also uh, the Salvation Army. So tons of ways you can help and get involved. We actually have a story up on our website right now. If you just go to comonews.com, the headline is how to help or donate in response to the deadly wildfire in Maui. Tons of resources there. So take a look if you'd like to get involved in, 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 in donate or maybe even I don't know, send a letter, send food. There's yeah. a ton of things you can do. We know that monetary donations can obviously make a huge difference Absolutely. in this type of thing. So that'll be a good resource for you if you're if you're looking for a way to help out with those folks in Hawaii. All right, we got to talk about what's happening with the Pac-12. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> Enlighten us, Steve. Oh, boy. All right, a lot of Huskies and Cougs talking about this the last couple of weeks. So many fans reacting to these recent moves with the Pac-12 conference and the uh, dissipation of the conference, as we say. Uh, we know the University of Washington going to the Big Ten next August. Oregon is joining them. Big question at the moment, what is going to happen to Wazoo? A lot of Cougs concerned about this. What has been interesting in reading through the comments on our website, on YouTube, on social media is there have been a number of people who have been calling for the firing of WSU's president um, and also the athletic director there at Wazoo just because of how this situation was handled. And a lot of people saying, more should have been done to prevent these moves and prevent sort of this collapse, as some people are calling it, of the Pac-12 conference. This week, we know that Wazoo's uh, president announced he's setting up an advisory committee to get some feedback about how the university should move forward. Does that mean going to the Mountain West Conference? Maybe something else that we haven't really talked about at this point. And a lot of people are talking about that interview that uh, Schultz had with ESPN last week and what they thought about you know, what he should do, what the university should do. So there's this comment from Kdub at dub underscore state zero four. Wazoo survival, this person said, is the only goal. That is a massive leadership void. There's a massive leadership void in the conference now. And your position to set the path and maximize WSU's cut, go big on urgency, this person says. And then we have another comment from Opera Lover. As a UW alum, Husky fan, and a 16-year employee of the Husky football program, I don't think the blame should be on UW. The Pac-12 administrators caused this. And Steve, I've been really quiet over here in the corner because yes, this is I've all noticed. like this is all new to me. I'm just like, what? <laughs> Pac-12 conference? Yeah. What? Um, you talked about the impact of this and yeah. in that tradition, this 100-year tradition. Yeah. Things have been the same for this long. Can you kind of expand on the impact? And I can really only speak from Wazoo's perspective because I'm a Coug, right? But I think a lot of Cougs feel like uh, we have been abandoned by UW in particular. Okay. Um, obviously our biggest in-state, one of our biggest rivals within the Pac-12 conference is UW. It has been for a number of years. A lot of people think about the Apple Cup and how that game has been played for so many years. 
Um, UW has won that game a lot more than Wazoo has. <laughs> you have to throw I that in there. Admit that. <laughs> but it's tradition. It is tradition that has lasted for several decades. And there's some people wondering if that's going to continue in mm -hmm. some capacity, um, if it has the same ramifications that it usually does. You know, that game is always played at the end of the season, right around Thanksgiving time, and it could have an impact on who goes to the Pac-12 championship or who goes mm -hmm. into, uh, you know, what type of bowl game you have at the very end of the season. And it's tough to think that that tradition may be lost Ooh. or may not be as important as it has been for so many years. A lot of people rattled about that then. Thank you yes. for explaining. Now I get it. There yes. was one more comment down here doubting Jim. It is understandable that Chun, Chun is the athletic, athletic director, director at, at Wazoo, Wazoo yep. would feel this way. However, one must question why an institution of higher learning should waste energies on other than academic pursuits. Mm. So that's interesting as well, because we mentioned, you know, what do students go to college for? Right. Really? I mean, some go for the sports and yes. athletics, but it's education. You think about the tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars that are spent on sports at not just universities that are right. local, but right. across the country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you hope that the number one reason that a lot of or most of these students go to school is for the uh, academics, for right. to get that degree, to right. figure out what you're going to do with your job and your career and that sort of thing. So should the money be more spent on academics instead of sports? Obviously, you don't want to lose sports as a fan. Um, it obviously creates opportunities for student athletes. What's the solution? Yeah, let us know what you think. I would personally like to see some friendly debate between Cougs and Huskies there in our comment section. I said friendly. Friendly and respectful. Friendly and respectful <laughs> debates, not a fight. Yes, because you <laughs> hope that Wazoo fans can respect what Huskies have to say and vice versa. Okay, right? and vice versa. That's Keep very it nice, big guys. of you, Mr. Keep it Coog. Nice. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about weekend events now. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Steve. We don't have any weekend events for you okay. this week, but we're looking to you. Yes. Let us know what you're doing this weekend or what you'd like to do. Yeah, yeah. or what you have on the docket. We actually got an interesting email from somebody uh, about an event that's coming up in September. We'll tell you about that in the next couple of weeks. But if you have something going on or you have something that you want us to mention on the show, Send that information to us and we'll try to get it on. Yeah, let's take a look at our uh, graphic here. All our social platforms. You can watch Sound On uh, and catch our little mini social clips on all these platforms as well in the next week. And uh, Steve, yes, next week's going to be a little different. It is. You see the set behind us? It's going to look a little different <laughs> next week. We're making some changes, which we have said yeah, we're going to do. Yeah. Show is evolving and we hope that you're going to be a part of the process. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. No retakes. No retakes. No retakes. Yeah. 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 I need a drink. Mm.